Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Today we're going to look at high quality image export out of Adobe Premiere Pro. I've received a few comments about exporting images out of Premiere Pro and I was baffled when people said they didn't look good and your images should look exactly like the original exporting them out. I'm going to show you all the different formats, my recommendation of what to use and uh, a few other things in there. So let's have a look. So I've got some Adobe stock of uh, some amazing Ravens. I happen to be a big fan of Ravens. And I took the very first frame of this because I wanted something uh, that also had hard edges on it so we could see good quality, a bunch of different uh, gradations on the on the feathers and some uh, gradients in the background. So I really wanted to, to test this. On the left, I've got my Lumetri scopes up so we can see the differences and I've already exported each one of these. I'll show you where to export them out. There's a little camera icon button right here, export frame. And if I open this up in the source monitor, you'll also see the same button there. So it's just an easy way to, to get to that. Let me grab my uh, scopes again. There we are. So this button here, export frame, it also has a keyboard shortcut. And you get a dialog box with some options. First of all is the name. I, this, I named the sequence DSLR 2997. That's what the uh, footage is. And you can change that to anything you want. So I could write Raven. And then there's different formats. I'll show you each one of these, but there's BMP, DPX, GIF, JPEG, OpenEXR, PNG, Targa, and TIFF the path of where they're going. So right now I've got this going to my test folder. If you want to change that, just click on the browse button and you can also import this back into the project. This used to be the only way we could do a, a freeze frame. Back in the day, uh, there was no frame hold options. I have a whole tutorial on frame hold options. Don't do it this way, but in the old way, you used to export out an image, cut the video and then stretch the duration of this image when you wanted the freeze frame. We're not going to do that. I'll go through the clips just by hitting my up and down arrow because I want you to see the quality and I'll jump to full screen. So this is the first frame of the video. That's the quality of the original. I'll jump to the bit VMP and I'll jump back and forth. You should not see any difference. So anyone that's emailed me or, or commented that the exports don't look as good, this is what they should look at, look like. So a BMP is an eight bits per channel. So don't get confused with eight bits per channel thinking some is 24 and some is eight. Eight bits per channel is also called a 24 bit image because there's RGB, three channels, three times eight is 24. So eight bit per channel is the same as a 24 bit image. BMP is a, a format that's been around for a long time. It's like a Windows bitmap format. I wouldn't use that JPEG. This is what most YouTubers would use. And for any kind of casual stuff, this is what I use. It's also eight bits per channel. And you can see jumping through between the, the two, I can't see a difference. Open EXR, don't use Open EXR. This is for visual effects artists who require super high quality uh, to apply in visual effects. If they're doing a Marvel movie, they're working with terabytes. Uh, petabytes of uh, open EXR files. They're huge. There's no benefit. It's a 32 bit per channel image. It's huge. It doesn't mean that this 8 bit video is going to be now, is going to look any better exporting out as 32 bits per channel. It won't. It just makes the file giant. Don't use open EXR. Uh, PNG file, if you do need more than 8 bit, I'll show you in a, in a second a good format. So PNG is, uh, for me, it's either JPEG or PNG. It's also eight bits per channel and you can see it looks pretty good. Targa is also another good choice. This is a long time old video format or an old still format that used to be the only format you could import. And TIFF is what I use if I really do care about it. So you can't set the compression value of the TIFF compression on the way out, but TIFF is just generally speaking a better quality than JPEG or PNG. So if I'm if I care about this, I'll export out a TIFF. And then there's DPX, which is a 16-bit per channel uh, image. 
This is a good quality to use for uh, super high quality. So if you have 10 bit footage and you want to now export this out to do something else, if you just want to put this on the web, then 8 bit is all you need because a web is 8 bit. But if you now need to go into a visual effects world with 16 bit per channel, DPX is a good idea. Although I did find that when I exported out a single frame from Premiere Pro, it exported out a DPX video file, not a still file. Uh, neither here nor there. Now let's look at one of the most dangerous formats. Look at that. This is GIF and have a look at what's happening on the feathers. So let's go back out and look at the scopes and all of these. So again, back to the original. That's what the scopes look like. Here's the, the BMP and, and anything you'll notice over here, this stuff here and this, that's the title showing up. So you gotta remember the scopes will change depending on every pixel in the image. It doesn't disregard the title. So the titles are influencing only that little piece on the, on the right side. But you can see, generally speaking, everything looks good. There's the JPEG. There's the open EXR. You can see the open EXR is identical to the JPEG. There's, I'm not getting any more data out of an 8-bit image by sending it out to a 32-bit open EXR. There's the ping. There's the Targa. There's the TIFF. And you'll notice when I hit the DPX, there's a slightly, a little shift in the overall latitude um, in the DPX is 16 bit and it, it's, it, again, it's not making any more data in the file, but it's the way that it's distributed in the file. It's ever so slightly a lower latitude on the top. Probably, well, I don't even notice it going back and forth. Okay, now have a look at that GIF, yikes. So GIFs are not even eight bit, they're indexed color, which means they're a, an exact specific amount of color. That's why there isn't enough colors to represent all the gradations in all the feathers because there's so many different variations of color to show every little edge of every feather, the GIF has to throw them away. And that's what you're seeing when you see those lines. In between those lines, the data is gone. And that's because GIF was made for, um, quick loading on the web, not for video. So it's a horrible format to use. Now, I also wanted to show you transparency and I've got transparency grid turned on here in my preferences. And the only format that supports transparency is ping. Here's all the other formats uh, exported out and they don't support it. So if you need transparency from a uh, uh, still that you're exporting, then use a PNG, a portable network graphics file. That's the only one that supports it. But you have to have transparency in the timeline to be, to be able to support that. And that's why I turned on my um, uh, transparency grid so I could show you that it was transparency. I have a whole tutorial about exporting out transparency that has a lot of tips in it. Now let's export out another version and import it. This time I'm going to turn on my effects I've got an adjustment layer here with effects on my uh, Ravens with a bunch of grain and a bunch of uh, lumetry hammered on this so you can see a huge difference with the title. So now I'll export this out and I'll call this Raven effects and I'm going to use Targa and I'm going to import this into the project and you'll see it'll show up down here and I'll drag it onto here, turn that on and off. Let me just uh, move that. I'll move it one frame here so we can go back and forth between these two. And let's jump to full screen. So there's the still, that's the video, that's the still, that's the video. The only thing you are seeing that's a slight difference is the title. But if you give the title a moment, watch this. That's the still, that's the video, watch the title. There's, I'll show you where that is. In here, there's a high quality, high quality playback. That is turned off by default. 
because it does require a lot more computing power. It, so titles will always export out perfect, but when it's playing, you'll see that the anti-aliasing gets a little coarser and they don't look as good for a second. Again, output looks great. That's why you saw the title change. Other than that, these are exactly the same. So that's the exact same original format exported out without effects, the same format exported with effects, any place that you you put your, your playhead and export out that frame, it should look identical to the timeline. All right. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, please take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. We love our PayPal supporters. You guys are great. Thanks, as always. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you informed about all the tools you have in Adobe application.